Hopefully. Or, or I have enough near... healers that it shouldn't be, but... Right? You or never know. Or TPK. Yeah, being on the front line, I'm like, hmm, yeah, that alien game, that's so good. <laughs> oh, it was good so times. bad. Good bad times. I, I'm sure things will go better for you uh, today. Kind of hope. Oh, let's go. Alrighty. So, uh, one quick thing. Yep. AB? Yes? Sorry about whales, dude. Yeah, no, it was just wishful thinking. It's not, they're not my side normally. It was just like, well, if they made it to the round of 16, you never know. Okay, done. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so as a quick recap, in, uh, in our first session uh, last time, you guys had been gathered together uh, by fate or happenstance at the taverna called the Soured Vintage. Uh, a young bard there named Kyra had basically let it be known that she was putting out word to adventurers to see who might fit the prophecy that Versailles had seen. Uh, unfortunately, previous groups had gone out and uh, tried to prove themselves against this boar that was rampaging around uh, and had not come back. Uh, but she had, uh, she had the utmost faith in you. Uh, but hired a couple of uh, extra hunters just to uh, hedge your bets a little bit. Uh, you managed to track down this monstrous boar that had uh, had made its way uh, through the countryside, uh, managing to kill it, uh, sacrifice it to uh, Thylea, getting a little bit of a, a, a bonus in, uh, in the meantime. I did add to your character sheets, I added the... the uh, the charm of vitality onto your character sheet so when you want to activate it you should be able to just click it um, it doesn't have any automated effects but it will heal uh, poison disease and uh, for the next 24 hours whenever you use hit dice you recover the maximum amount of hit points uh, but it's a one use so you, once you use it it's done um, following that uh, ver uh, Kyra said uh, the next step basically is to is to meet with the oracle to see if you are in fact the heroes that she has prophesized uh basically you passed the entrance exam but now you have to like meet the prof as it were but you uh managed to make it back to the to the soured vintage um and as you as you arrive it doesn't take long for kyra to basically start spreading word amongst uh, amongst the people that are at the tavern uh, about what uh, what's happened uh, and it's it's very odd for for some of you for the the first time because uh, some of you are somewhat uh, outcasts or uh, you know you you may look imposing um, people generally speaking may not necessarily be friendly to you but for the first time uh, people people are welcoming people are you know, patting you on the back. People are, are buying you drinks. They, they are eager to hear your tales. And it's, uh, it's definitely a, a weird feeling, but not an unpleasant feeling uh, as you make your way back to the Sour Vintage to do what you would like to do. I thought we had just had a meal and we were going to head out. Yeah, we, yeah. It's entirely possible. Say, this it, is the morning after, I believe? Yep. Alright. Yes, because I had slept outside. Uh, I would slept on the roof after getting a cryptic warning. Right. right. Yes, being all mysterious and creepy. Perfect. Yeah, I slept in a normal bed. <laughs> I also slept in a normal bed. Weird well, half a normal bed. In a in a normal bed like normal people. Yes. For the wings and being short. Alright. Uh so when you set out in the morning, it is uh it is a a nice day. It's a little bit on the cool side, a little bit of a like a dew on the grass. Uh, but definitely not unpleasant. 
uh, once again you have this uh, <clears throat> this kind of weird sensation as you as you make your way following Kyra towards the uh, towards the temple. Uh, the animals seem to be following along with you and keeping pace with you and you know kind of trading off you know so like you know some smaller animals will follow you for a bit and then they'll trade off and then you'll look and there'll be some birds flying overhead but they're flying in a pattern that they are definitely keeping an eye um, and once or twice one of the uh, one of the hawks or other birds will let out uh, a cry uh, just in time to startle some sort of uh, predatory animal that might be like on the prowl for you. It looks like the, the local wildlife seems to be keeping their eye open uh, for anything that may waylay you. I oh. need... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, well, uh, apparently that sacrifice is working out kind of coolly. Can I occasionally feed the small woodland creatures? Will they come that close? Oh, absolutely they do. Like, if you if you hold out any, any sort of food, or even if you just, like, stop and put your hand down, they'll come right up. They, they're, there's, no, there's no fear at all in them. I will totally give them some, like, nuts and berries from my trail rations, and I will pet some of them. Yeah, I totally embrace the uh, Snow White moment. My character kind of looks like Snow White, so pale, dark hair, except, you know, leather and a corset. So, grown up Snow White. Yeah, stuff that would never be allowed in a Disney film. But may have been part of the original story. Exactly. Okay, sure. Honestly, Snow given the timeline, probably did wear a corset. So as you make your way through the uh, through the the hinterlands towards the uh, towards the hills to the uh, to the east of uh, Astoria, uh, Kyra is uh, she's chatty, but she seems a little bit more preoccupied than usual, almost like you know. She's not. Uh, she's not entirely sure how how things are going to go, but she's pointing out, you know, the rivers and the lakes, and you know, giving you kind of a, like a little bit of a, a history of the land, uh, as it were. Nothing, nothing terribly important or relevant. And to Sophia, who is uh, a trained historian amongst other things, a lot of it is just like uh, tourist prattle. Arathius uh, seems wrapped and pays good attention, which is probably for the best of, for the woodland creatures. <laughs> Anytime there's any kind of an error or uh, exaggeration for effect, uh, Sophia will kind of chuckle to herself, but she won't correct it. There is, there is a lot of that. There is a lot of embellishment for effect. Uh, and, you know... A lot of like over here is where this great battle took place, or something similar to it. At any rate, happened. You know, a lot of playing up the the local area far more than uh, is, is strictly speaking necessary. But it seems to seems to keep her amused. And more important, it keeps Arathius amused. <laughs> so, um, at. Um, at a certain point she stops she says so uh when we when we see Versi, uh, she is you do need to be aware of the fact that, that she is she is the daughter of sidon um but she's she's always been an ally to the mortal races she's uh she is the one that brokered the oath of peace uh 500 years ago now um, so she can have a temper, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's no real way to, easy way to put that. So yes, she has her father's temper. Uh, but, uh, as long as you're, you know, the heroes of prophecy and, you know, aren't 
kind of looks at you and says, um, actually, so far, you guys don't strike me as the sort of people who are indignant or rude. So you've got that going for you. So I think this is going to go quite well. But I, I felt like a caution, uh, while not necessarily needed, was probably something I should do. I think we can behave ourselves. As she says this, Helena is like wide-eyed, scratching the chin of a squirrel. I would think so. We've all been raised with some degree of manners, I would imagine. And undoubtedly, but sometimes Sometimes heroes tend to think they're bigger than what they actually are. Well, I was under the impression that we weren't technically heroes until she says we were. That's a that's a, a good mindset to have. Definitely, definitely keep that in and at the forefront when you're when you're speaking with her. Right. And uh, as you continue on, she leads you. Uh, basically, you're at this point. You've traveled for a, a good portion of the day. You're you're several leagues away from uh, from the the vintage, uh, and you start to get into like a, a more kind of like rocky crag type of area, a more slightly hilly and mountainous uh, area. The the small forests here and there have disappeared and are now just like steep walls of craggy rock. Um, and as you descend into the chasm uh, it actually gets warmer uh, and you start to see like warm vapors basically cut, pouring out of the cracks and the vents along the, the walls and the floor of the chasm that you're walking through kind of putting like an eerie mist through the whole thing volcanic fissures probably something very similar um, and I will need uh, everybody can give me a dexterity saving throw well screw me off to a great start alright well get those bad rolls out now a really great start Way to go, Sophia. <laughs> Sadly, or no, in a good way, I'm rolling like I was in Fallout earlier in the week where 19s and 20s are bad. <laughs> See, my tour propensity goes again. That's true. All right. Um, so, um, everybody, Deacon, Arathius, Helena, and Agrius. As you guys are making your way through this, between the the uh, sudden sudden bouts of like scalding uh, steam out of the walls and these little puddles of near boiling temperature water, uh, each of you takes four points of damage as you make your way through this crevice. Oh, careful! It's hot down here. It is, uh, it is a very, very warm down here. That's quite unpleasant. How do I put my damage on my sheet? Click on the first number of your HP. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thankfully, you don't have to travel through this for too long until the... Uh, the cavern starts to open up, uh, and you definitely see a temple off to one side. I don't understand why some are so enamored with boiling their bodies in waters of that temperature. Give me a second. Let perhaps me... they just like, perhaps they just like being seafood. Yeah, D 
Dude, I'm seafaring and I still don't like my water that hot. Uh, oh god, Icarus died. Uh, so yeah, so you can see off to your off to your left there is a, there is a very obvious temple in this chasm. Uh, but what really draws your attention is the fact that there are some uh, soldiers stationed out front. seem to be any indication of who the temple was to or did I miss that? Uh, there is not but Kyra has said that you're going to see for receipt at her temple so one would assume this is her temple. Gotcha. Um, how does Kira react to the soldiers? Kira's like huh that's uh that's not right. This, Are uh, there any insignia on the soldiers that are like is immediately recognizable uh give me a perception check perception i can do that perception that was a shitty ass roll um you can see they do have some sort of uh symbol embossed on their shield but you can't make it out from this distance or angle Hey, Mr. Military Hoplite dude, do you recognize their insignias? Because I can't see them from here. I don't know if my eyes are any better, but I have a tradition of military history behind me. Yeah, I, I thought your knowledge of insignias might be better than... Yeah, with your with your soldier background, uh, you recognize that that's the, uh, the symbol of Sidon. Oh, what was that again? It's the it's the symbol for the uh, the Order of Sidon. Well, hmm. it looks to me like they're wearing the symbology of the the Order of Sidon. That can't be good. So, uh, as uh, as Arathius moves up, they they do kind of move out into like a like a formation and bring their bring their spears to bear a, a good day gentlemen um we can't help but notice you stationed behind beside yon temple how may we or anyone be assisting of you they kind of look at you and they say you're one of those ones that killed the boar. And they lower their spears into a more aggressive stance. Well, if I was to make it more precise and exact, I would say that the fates themselves took their due from the boar as it had run its course. Chris, can I do anything to assist in B's negotiations? Uh, well, the, the negotiations is basically... Oh, no, they're not going to negotiate. They, they, they have their orders. Cool, and I have mine. Uh, so, if folks want to roll some initiative? Oh, look at my initiative. That was quick. <laughs> hey, check it out. Look at Arathia sitting here going, why don't you understand that it's time had come? I mean, it's just a matter of fate. You're, uh, yeah, Arathia is all just like, I thought we were talking this out, man. I, I didn't realize you were that dense. They are. They really are. Oh, hey. Nice and useless. Okay, these don't disconnect from reality. Uh <laughs> Click on the swords. There's a D20 beside your name. It's not as bad as it could be in Torque. No, but see, that wasn't officially an initiative roll. 
It was just a d20 roll. Yeah, your initiative is near the. Oh. It's next to your modifiers on your top of your page. Okay, my bad. Or you can go to the cross swords and there's a d20 icon beside Deacon. Which you can just click. There we go. Marg Slightly better. Marginally better. I, however, disconnect. <laughs> I was going to say, better than Arathius. Our warlock starts phasing in and out of reality. His, his masters are summoning him. Right. Sorry, um, I don't have call waiting. I'll be right back. Uh, so Kyra, for her turn, um, she will she will basically start to... Uh, she just, uh, this isn't right. They, they shouldn't be here. The, this isn't right. She starts singing this uh, this song of, of ancient heroes doing battle against the, the forces of the Titans, uh, giving everybody a uh, one free reroll till the start of her next turn. Cool. This soldier is going to move forward and he is going to try to spear Arathius. A 15. Can can I use spear waiting? No. Okay, so I take two points of damage. Right. I see. So yeah, so he brings the spear down, and he's he's fighting, uh, and uh, and Deacon can tell he he's definitely a trained soldier. He's fighting in proper thing, and you have the feeling that if they were to like coordinate on somebody, it's probably going to be very bad. Uh, but as it is, the spear just kind of like catches across your uh, your shoulder ever so slightly, doing probably more damage to the. Uh, the, the clothing that's there and then to the arm itself. Uh, brings us to Helena. Hey, um... This back, I have to quickly read something. Ah, sweet. It's bonus action. So I'm going to give a Bardic Inspiration dice to our darling Hoplite. Okay. And... Then I'm going to Vicious Mockery, the one that just attacked Arathia. So. Oh, he will not save. He will take a bunch of damage. Four psychic damage. So yeah, so... Uh, so, uh, Jeff, so you're aware... Um, the Bardic Inspiration, so sometime within the next ten minutes you can add a d6 to an attack or a saving throw after you've made that roll, but before I tell you whether it succeeds or not. Cool. And, uh, yeah, I, I basically look at the the soldier and I tell him that he's horribly dressed and who wears bronze after Labor Day. He needs drama. Anyway, and I do four points of sight. Okay. Uh, that guy is going to run up to try to basically hold you from uh, from aiding your friend, uh, but it takes his action to get up there. Uh, it brings us to Agrius. Okay, well, fun starts. Okay, so as a bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and do Healing Word on um, uh, Arathius. Okay. It's not much, but it's at least the fire damage back. And then I'm going to straight toward the target. Oh, that won't work. Okay. Well, I'm going to hit the one in front of me with my normal attack. Okay. And seven doesn't hit, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so you, you bring the scimitar around, but he manages to get the shield up and it just glances off it. Bring us to Sophia. <clears throat> so, 
Sophia uh, points at the things around here. Um, the deacon is the one uh, up by the up on his own right now. I uh, know that's Arathius. Oh, I'm Hello. Good in morning. your top left with a shield. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, Arathius is off on his own. Uh, Pleasure. Really? Are you sure? That doesn't look like a. Um, Sophia is going to point at the one up by Arathius. See, this is your only warning. Philia wants us to be let through. And she'll point and guiding bolt. Ooh. Now, to use that on the character sheet, I'm doing what? Uh, <laughs> just click the little icon for the spell and it should roll it for you. Oof. Wow. So what co what color is your guiding bolt? Um is there a specific color that's sacred to Philea? Um probably green, but your goddess is Valus, I believe. Uh no, for the druids they worship Philea or the um the old wood. Yes, but but you're a cleric of Valis, correct? Ah, true. Yes. Okay. Shouldn't all of Sophia's effects be white? They probably should, given her color scheme. So yes, it'll be a, a bright white light. So this this bright oh. white light just like shoots out of Sophia's hand, and there's just like that brief moment of like the the two eyes going blink blink blink. Um, as the as that soldier just dissipates. Moot. She'll look over to the one uh, that's by uh, Agris and Deacon and kind of frown. Okay, this soldier is just kind of just going uh huh. What he just he takes like a step back. Ooh. I just watched one of my buddies dissolve in a bright light. I take a step back too. <laughs> it's one of those things. I do like morale type things for like intelligent people. Uh, but this guy is going to go up uh, to where Arathius is with his spear. A 13. Oh, all the damage. So yeah, so uh, he kind of puts like a little bit of weight behind the spear as he as he comes in, and it pierces your your bicep pretty deeply. That will bring us to Deacon. Cool. I just had that laundered. Yeah, and I sh I should I should mention because I completely forgot uh, Josh uh, with Agrius. I remember that Kyra did give you a reroll if you want to use it, and it goes away at the start of her turn. Okay. Well, you should probably take that now. Yep, I totally will. Is it okay if I use it on Cemetery? Yeah. Okay. Uh, advantage? Question mark? Uh, no. Sadly, not advantage. Uh, but you can you can get advantage if you can get into a, a flanking position. So if you're direct, okay. if you've got back like, uh, if you're directly on the other side of an opponent from an ally, then you get flanking. Cool. Okay. Uh, so Deacon is up. All right. Well, 
I've got my shield set, and I'm going to stab him with my spear. A nine is not going to do it, but you do have that reroll from Kyra. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take that reroll, so let's try again. Much sexier. That is definitely hit. So, bored by the uh, the song of the heroes of the past and and the thought that you may one day be included in one of these songs, you drive that spear pretty deep into his abdomen. Not quite all the way through, but uh, at, when you pull it back out, it is gushing blood pretty heavily. Uh, that will bring us to Arathius. Oh, oh yes. Yes. One, one, one quick thing. Um, now, what was that with the D6 I can add to things? Or is this the attack rolls? Uh, attacks and saving throws. Gotcha. Oh. Attack, saving throws, and ability checks, actually. Okay. So, is five foot adjustment still a thing? Because I don't want to get speared trying to back up. Uh, no, you would have to take the disengage action, which is actually an action. That would preclude uh, casting or attack. It would. Part of what makes rogues so nimble is they get an ability where they can disengage as a bonus action. And casting at close range, I take a chance of getting attacked? Uh, no, but it's a disadvantage if it's a ranged attack. If you're in melee with somebody and you're doing something at range because they're going to interfere with it, so even if you were to, like, even if you were to do a ranged attack at this guy, you would still be at disadvantage because this guy is fucking you up. Well, that's rough because that's the guy I actually want to affect with a spell anyway, but okay. it's still a ranged spell. Yeah. It's still disadvantage. Basically, he's like knocking your arms aside with his spear as you're trying to make your emotions. Darn those pointy bit. Stupid guys and their stupid sticks. Right? Well, you know what? I'm still going to try. One day they will build a stick so large it will shatter the earth. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Hellish Rebuke is actually, it's a reaction for when you get attacked. Well, I was attacked by him. Okay, so so we'll just back, back it a little bit. You would have done it. He attacks you and then you use your reaction to Hellish Rebuke him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that way, that still leaves your action here uh, free and clear. For anybody that's watching, some people are new at D&D 5th edition, so. Um, so yeah, so when he speared you, you just like instinctively react and the, the fates reach out and they go like, no, he's our plaything, not yours. And he just kind of racks over with pain. Okay, that could have been a, a oh, wait a minute. That was a it was a pretty shitty damage roll, but yeah, yeah, it looks like I did it twice anyway. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, okay, then my actual thing. Now, now your actual turn. In that case, I'll just uh, try and Eldritch Blast him, I guess. Okay. Uh, with the disadvantage, that is unfortunately that is a miss. But you do have the reroll from Kara if you like. 
Yeah, I'll use the reroll. Okay. Oof, even with disadvantage, that is a solid, solid hit. So as you kind of like lean back, taking like the, the sword to the, the bicep, just gather that arcane energy and just like put your fist like right in his face and unleash it. And he just drops. Much like Deacon, you're starting to see the uh, the value of this uh, heroic tale. Uh, which Cairo will continue to sing since you guys seem to be so inspired by her. Uh, which will bring us to Helena. So, since it worked so well last time, I'm just going to Vicious Mockery again. Okay. Let's roll it. Okay. Which one? Um, the one that's right in our way. Gotcha. Anybody can... And... Sorry, what? All right. So, This uh... time, she, uh, she says... Ah, hideous fiend. Oh, no, wait. You're just ugly. Okay. All right. Um... And he takes four points of damage. So, yeah. As, uh, as your, uh, insulting words hit his ears, he basically kind of loses his footing and falls into that pool, that steaming pool right beside him. And bubbles and hisses momentarily before going silent again. Kill him with insults? Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Told you she yes. Crazy. Yes, pay attention to the one killed by insults, not the one dissolved by the fates. Hey, both are fun. Both are fun. Dissolved by the fates? Cooked in a pool? Where's my characters for the win? Uh, Agrius. Alright, well, Agri's seen enough of this. Um, you see Agri take off into a charge and move directly towards the last, uh, what looks to be soldier. So, Chris, I'm assuming that's at least 30 feet from point A to point B. Uh, it is. Uh, what's your movement speed? 40. Perfect. Yeah, you can get right up to his, right up to him. Okay. So, and the scimitar. Right into his mic grill. Alright, so my charge adds an extra d6 here, so I'm assuming I'm just going to modify my scimitar damage. Uh, if you just, uh, if you click charge, I, I've got it keyed, so you can just hit the charge and it'll do it like that. Cool, thank you. And I'll take that. Oh. Nice. So as, as uh, Agri just like charges and the, the, the glumping of hooves across the uh, across the stonework here and brings the scimitar down and just like um, cuts deep from like shoulder to like shoulder to hip in a downward slash. Uh, and that guy that guy drops. But from where Agri is, you can see uh, inside the temple and there are uh, some more uh, more soldiers and also um, what looks to be a priest of some nature and it looks like they have some hostages. Can I as basically my bonus action say more inside? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. That's the party. Yeah, okay. ab absolutely you can. Uh, once you guys actually move inside I do actually have a separate map for it, but... One sec here. How many soldiers are inside the temple? So yeah, uh, so Agri, you do see uh, four more soldiers and what looks like uh, somebody dressed in like ceremonial robes, uh, and they have um, uh, they have a handful of prisoners as well. It looks like they were possibly like they've got sacrificial daggers, or the the priest guy has a sacrificial dagger. It looks like you've basically interrupted them in the process of perhaps doing something 
unpleasant. Okay. So yeah. Agri bellows out more inside and looks ready to charge again. Okay. Uh, that will bring us to Sophia. Sophia's going to uh, run toward the temple around the pool. She she noticed what happened to the guy who fell in, and she has no desire to be cooked. Okay. No one needs beef soup. Mmm, <laughs> oxtail soup. How, no, no oxtail soup today. Uh, so she can go 40 feet. Are each of these squares five? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Two. Uh, and you can't do diagonal? Or can? Yeah. Yes, you can, yep. Okay, so she'll be right up the side. Uh, she'll be right up side, beside Agrius. Um, and she'll pull out her mace. And just yell, you were warned. Uh, that will bring us to Deacon. Okie dokie. Uh, I think... I think you can do here and it just moved to my maximum distance, I think. Okay. Yeah, you can move uh, 30 feet and then if you, uh, if you run, you can move a, uh, a another 30. Okay. Although I think the hand axes that I have are a 2060 range. So I think I'll move up close enough to get inside the 20 and then have a hand axe thrown. Alrighty. Yeah, you could get up to like here or here. Alrighty, and I uh, quickly pull out a hand axe and hurl it. Oh, good! You, you, you all are taking the point this time. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, which guy did you want to hit? All three in those front row or within the twenty feet? Uh, yep. The one that's just the closest to me diagonally. All right. So you pull back and you throw that hand axe and it embeds deep in his chest. He, like, stumbles back, <clears throat> coughs up a bunch of blood, but manages to barely, barely, barely stay on his feet. Cool. Someone go sneeze near him. set shield with spear and get ready. I'll just hang around down here. I'll let them all go next. I'm feeling generous. Alright. Alright. So that soldier is going to come out and he is going to try to spear Sophia since she dares dares to utter blasphemy. <laughs> and what can we do as reactions? Anything? Uh, very little. Um, some, some classes have things that they can do as reactions, like uh, thieves can do at a certain level, thieves can have the damage from one attack. But he's gonna he's gonna spear you pretty damn hard for six points of damage. Ouch. Um now with my uh wearing my chain mail, how does that help? Uh well that was that's what determines your armor class, but uh, I rolled a twenty two. Ouch. 
A 22 is going to hit anybody at this level and most people at higher levels. Okay. And how do I yep. track the image? You click on the first oh, number of your hit points. Yep. Gotcha. That's right. He did six. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, the wounded guy, he doesn't feel like closing, so he's going to grab a javelin and he's going to throw it at Deacon. Ooh, a 19 for 7 damage. Ouch. So yeah, these soldiers are apparently a little bit better trained than the ones out front. That one is going to close with Agrius. Nope. My luck had to run out at some point. Well, thankfully it was before I fell over dead. Uh, this soldier is going to move out here. What's he going to do? Uh, he will... Well, let's range on that. Let's spread some damage around. He's going to see Helena way at the back there, and he's going to assume she's a caster of some sort, because casters are normally at the back, and he's going to throw a javelin at her. He can fuck right off. He, he, gets, a, <laughs> he gets a five because of disadvantage. He does not fucking hit me. Like I said, he can fuck right off, and he's going to be the first one I insult. Ah, uh, Bracia. What is Bracey going to do? Uh, Bracey is going to cast a spell. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, Sophia and Agrius, uh, since you guys are both uh, divine spellcasters, you can see the uh, the priest in the back basically grabs this holy symbol and you see this vaguely shimmering dome just appear around him. Noted. Uh, that will bring us to Arathius. Who for the first time since this started has people between him and the bad guys. This, this is unusual. I'll move up a little bit. Okay. And then I will guess I'll attempt that wisdom save spoken of in the sanctuary spell. Okay. Excellent. Now let's roll that Eldritch Blast against Breka. Worshipful son of Sidon, I consign your soul to the fates themselves. Conveniently, he had exactly nine hit points. So yeah, so uh, as uh, as this shield is there, and he, he gets this like smirk on his face, like you know the power of the Lord of Storms will protect me. Arathius just walks up and kind of sees them. To you know, the, the fates are stronger than than the Titan sort of thing, and just launches the Eldritch Blast and. It, just goes right through that shield and just blasts him into into itty bitty pieces. Uh, Kyra will move up, but she will continue to sing her song since uh, that seems to be the best option she's got currently. Uh, well, actually. <laughs> Uh, that will bring us to Helena. Alright, Helena is going to move up just behind Arathius there, just so I can see and make sure I'm within range. And the one that decided it was a good idea to throw a spear at me. Um, hmm. Nice saying, you jackass! 
Nope. Uh, I actually have a list of D&D appropriate insults. Oh, I have one of those in my part, too. It's awesome. <laughs> so I yell at him, you are irrelevant to the main plot line. And I roll vicious mockery. Apparently he thinks he is relevant. He is very relevant. He is the most relevant soldier here. Oh, sad face. Bastard. I'll get him next time. He made his reality check. Yeah. He made his reality check. There you go. I deny your reality, child of Sidon, and substitute my own. <laughs> I may have to get some 90s insults for the next one. Uh, Agrius is up. All right. Well, um, and just pack and slash. Something like you're so pathetic that you couldn't even do emo, right? Oh. Actually, you know what? Um, Agri uh, basically two front hooves come up, and you see him break out into a rage. As um, I'm activating my rage. Does it have no available uses remaining? Question mark. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Did you not rest your character after you leveled up? I see. just corrected it on the sheet here, Chris. Okay. There we go. Okay, so raging, and now I'm going to attempt to hit. Yeah, and if you hit the uh, apply active effects, it should add all of your bonuses in for you. Should be two more damage. So 10 damage on him. Where's the apply active effects? Just out of curiosity. Uh, under the effects tab, you'll see one for rage. Oh, okay. And then if you toggle it on, it should add everything. Okay, load it for next time. Yeah, and then you'll notice on your main sheet it's got your slashing, piercing, bludgeoning. Uh, resistances and your damage should be the the plus two damage should be included as well. So what cool. does since it's the first time anybody's seen it, what does uh, Agrius's rage look like? Yeah, so basically um, he kicks up and you kind of see his um, eyes kind of gloss over, <laughs> and um, Scimitar comes out and he just starts to basically hack at the soldier in front of him. And uh, that soldier is basically, he's got his shield up, but those blows are like just driving and denting that shield and practically driving him to his knees. Much like his, uh, his buddy over there that got the hand axe in the chest, he is barely standing. Uh, Sophia. Um, the one who speared me. Yep. Which, which one was that? The guy right okay. beside you. Well, on the diagonal? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Sophia is going to snarl, don't you know who I am? And swing her mace at his head. Holy crap. A 20. I mean, it, it's really bad damage for a critical, but wow. Yeah, the damage sucked. <laughs> but that's like your your third natural 20? Uh, it's definitely my second. Because you got, a, you got two in the combat and one on the deck saving throw earlier. Oh, okay. I didn't realize I had had two in the combat. So. Well, yeah. foundry. Foundry so, like somebody. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely rolling the same way I did in Fallout the other night when all I could seem to roll were 19s. Yeah. Hey, wow, we got like raided by like 12 people. Hey guys, welcome to our Odyssey of the Dragon Lords game. Hello. <laughs> hey. 
Unfortunately, I can't pay too much attention to the chat, but uh, Deacon, you're up. You've got a raging centaur to one side and what looks like a very perturbed minotaur in front of you. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to move. <laughs> and I am going to use my new ability to make two attacks... Okay. So it's going to be, well, spear stab and then pivot spear stab. Okay. Well, you get to make two attacks total. You're not at the level yet where you get to do, like, four attacks. Oh, no, no. I mean, like, one guy and then one guy. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, like, one spear for you and I'll pull back out and stick it in the other guy. Okay, so let's do a little spearing. That looks pretty sad. Can I use a reroll? Uh, yes, you've got the reroll from Kyra. Right. Somewhat better. Twelve is still a miss, so he, he's barely hanging on to life, but he manages to get that shield up. Your spear does, like, knock his shield aside. Uh, but he deflects the blow. I'm going to use the added D6 on the attack. Okay. So if you just uh, slash R space 1D6. Uh, that'll bring it to a 17. That is... So yeah, so uh, thinking of the, uh, the inspiring... Uh, presence of having not just one but two bards in here definitely you're going to make it into one of these uh heroic tales you drive your spear like up and through probably pull your hand axe out in the process excellent and then we attack on the next guy And you just spin around, uh, bringing your spear like into into his side and like kind of out the far side, uh, dropping him as well. Nice. Hmm. This guy's getting. Hmm. I felt my spear on my shield. <laughs> Uh, the soldier that's left, he would love to try to retreat, but he's afraid if he retreats, he's going to get cut down by an angry centaur. So, uh, you know what? He is actually, he is going to disengage. And he's going <laughs> to move back. Pull back. And his buddy is going to move, and he's going to ready an attack for anybody that comes within melee of him. So one of the, the badly wounded guy limps back in deeper into the, the temple itself and his buddy's kind of providing cover for him. That will bring us to Arathius. It's time to meet your fate, wounded soldier. Oh, I'll use the reroll on that one for sure. Yep. Ooh. Ooh, the critical was only for advantage though, but the four damage is still more than enough to finish off the uh, guy limping around with one whole hit point. Yeah. Uh, Kara, Kara's gonna move up and she's gonna kind of survey what's going on, um, uh, but she will continue to uh, to sing her song of heroism. Uh, but you do notice now that uh, her song of heroism is starting to bring in elements of uh, of your guys's actions now. Uh, she's starting to basically tie the the deeds that you're doing with the deeds of heroes of the past um, to inspire you all. Uh, Helena. Braves Robin. Okay. So Helena is going to move up so she has line of sight. And then I'm going to look at the last guy. 
and scream, You're a disappointment to your ancestors! <sighs> That's shitty damage. Bill Dammit. <laughs> My <laughs> ancestors were nobody's too! <laughs> Alright. Uh, Agrius. Agrius is, Agrius is going to go ahead in his fit of rage and basically close the distance and attempt to strike with the scythe. Right. Agrius smash. Yeah, sheath that spear in your chest so that you can finish him off. Hey Josh, how long does your rage last? Um, one sec. Pretty sure it is for. I think in the description it said a minute. Yeah, it's uh, it's one yeah. minute, but if you go an entire round without attacking or being attacked, uh, it drops. Yeah, ah. I basically have to I have to keep fighting, otherwise, it pops off. Yeah. Alright. Just like the Magic the Gathering Juggernaut. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there is a there is a at a certain level of barbarian later on you do get the uh, even if you don't attack or take damage your rage keeps going for the full duration. Uh, I, I have played my share of barbarians. Um, so yeah, so Agri just charges uh, charges across and brings this thing down and essentially just like shatters the shield. It's like you know in uh, in um, Endgame when Thanos like destroys Cap's shield and there's like half of it left, that's pretty much the, sh the shape this guy's shield is in right now. He now has a half moon shield. Yes. Uh, Sophia. That disgusting creature is still standing. Alright. I'm, I'm going to run up beside my hoofed friend and uh, try to smack him with my mace. Hoof unity? Hoof unity. <laughs> oh, not nearly so nicely this time. But, I mean, still enough to do okay. damage, apparently. Um, well, it automatically rolls the damage. Um, oh, okay. Uh, but you do have the reroll from Kyra. Uh, sure, I'll use that. Because I would like to not be attacked by soldiers anymore. Well, that's not going to stop. I would an 18. And 18 will definitely hit. It's only 4 damage, though. That's fine, he didn't have much left. <laughs> he did not. Um, so, uh, under the combined assault of, uh, of Sophia and, uh, and, uh, Agrius, this, uh, this final, final soldier d drops, um, and you have a... Team hoofs for you. Uh, and you have a brief moment to kind of, like, get your, get your bearings, take a look around. It doesn't seem to be any more imminent threats here. There are, uh, a couple of bound and gagged, um, hostages that look like the, uh, priest that, uh, uh, Arathius was uh, easily dispatched despite his sanctuary from Sidon. Uh, looks like they were potentially ready to be sacrificed. Time to let them out. Yeah, um... This isn't the type of bondage we should be seeing in a temple. I will uh, go start... I'm assuming with blessings from our Religious folk go start releasing hostages. Yes, please. Sophia kind of shakes her mace to get some of the blood off it and looks down at her no longer white clothing. Yeah, but. I just go start, like, cutting ropes. This is how we cut the ropes, cut the ropes, cut the ropes. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, this room, uh, this this inner chamber. Now that you take a look around, 
It's dominated by a massive bronze statue side and sitting on a throne uh, at the rear of uh, what looks like a like a, a small little pool. Uh, at the foot of the statue is a rectangular pool reflecting the lights of four large braziers and rippling patterns on the ceiling. Uh, the soldiers and the priest, all of them had bronze mail and bright blue cloaks. Um, they, they were in the process of, uh, of perhaps sacrificing these hostages to, uh, to Sidon. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the gentlemen is wearing a like, more priestly attire than the, uh, than the three attendants. I just, oh, th- thank, thank you. <sighs> is any... I didn't see any of your people fall. Or is everybody is everybody okay? Uh, I think a few are slightly injured, but none of us injured, dropped. but not terribly. Okay. I can still walk. I think. So, no. Yes, I can still walk. Well, the, um, well thank, thank you so much. I'm happy to be. What's happening here? Who? Why were the soldiers here? They, uh, about a week or so ago, this 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 witch came. Um, with soldiers from Sidon started taking the acolytes and the and the attendants hostage, sacrificing them. Uh, they're I think they're after I think they're after Versi. I think I think the witch is doing something with Versi, uh, in the grotto. I, I can't be certain though. Uh, and while he's talking, he's like walking over at Arathius and just kind of like, uh, uh, and he kind of looks at Arathius and says, like, uh, I mean no offense, but this is the least I can do. Oh, no offense taken. And uh, he will heal you up for six. Oh, that feels remarkably better. Less like I took a spear. Or two. Uh, I have I have limited limited uh, abilities, but who else who else is badly hurt? And he'll look around. I'm over half down. Sophia will point back to Deacon after giving everyone a. I agree. We'll also okay. point to Deacon. Okay. Yeah, Helen is pretty okay too. So. Okay. Which which way to the grotto? Cool. Uh, the the grotto is through th- through the doors there. This is this the, this shouldn't shouldn't be happening. This is why would people who fall aside and send somebody to attack his daughter? They've been ensorcelled or enchanted of some kind. Let's. Come along. There's there's rescuing to be done. Well, the fuck that place, man. I thank you, kind sir, for the healing. Um. Uh, just wait, and he he like. Yes. Ah. Uh, in in the attendance room, if they haven't been searched, um, we have some we have some potions that we had made for sale. Uh, they may be of use to you. Ooh. Oh, far be it for us to turn those up. I say, uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll just be a just be a moment. And actually, he'll he'll motion to the attendants. He's like, go go. Uh, Fetch, fetch the potions. It's like, yes, yes. I know, I know they're for sale for later. That's, it won't matter. Um, so the two of the attendants rush down. Uh, basically, they rush down this hallway uh, into the uh, into the attendants' room. They're only gone like a minute or so, and they come back, uh, and they've got uh, six. Um, Vials of a uh, like a reddish, uh, reddish fluid in them. Good question. Am I the only one that sees a part map? 
No, you are not. Uh, it might depend on where you are because of lighting. Oh, okay, gotcha. Some of us were already on the way inside. That's Is cool. that an Incana? Uh, Arcana check, Chris? Um, to identify the potions? Uh, yeah, that kind of check would definitely, definitely do it. Okay. Hey, look, it's over. Arcana check to identify the potions. I don't know if that's enough. I think it's enough. Yeah, these are these are fairly common. You recognize them. Uh, it's it's fairly common for healing potions, and it's fairly common for certain churches and temples to manufacture them for sale as a way of generating uh, income uh, for their temple. Uh, how many did they give us? Uh, six. Uh, so if I did this right uh, on Foundry, if you go over to items, the little broken urn looking thing, and uh, you should see Potion of Healing. Cool. And then you can drag it onto your character sheet, and then you can click it to use it. Uh, in I the do not see that. You don't see that? Not seeing that. Me neither. Yeah, there's there's no items, uh, options. Hmm. Maybe you might have only given access to one person. Nope. It might be because I have it in a folder, maybe. Aha, uh -huh, I have it. It is in the treasure folder. Um, there it is now. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. And how many were there, sorry? There's six altogether. Oh, okay. That's convenient. And we just drag that into our inventory folder? Yep. One each is convenient. One each and an extra. Well, we do have uh, a person with us. Uh, Cairo will... She'll hold on to it, but uh, let her know if you need it. She plans to, to stay back and not do too much fighting. I'm I'm far more effective just bolstering uh, bolstering you on, as opposed to getting into the into the thick of it, as it were. I'm sorry, Chris, but how do I drag the potion to where it's got to go? Uh, you should be able to just drag it onto your character sheet, and it should drop it into your inventory. Yeah, it really doesn't matter where onto your character sheet you drag it. And then when you go okay. to your inventory on your character sheet and just scroll down to consumables, it should be listed there. There you go. Um, and uh, an important note for uh, something I just discovered. Uh, if you uh, if you right click, you have the ability to make to add something to your favorites and then your favorites show up on your main attribute sheet. Uh, categorized by whether it's in your inventory or a feature oh. or whatever. Yeah, I just found yeah. that out. And I thought, hey, that's really cool. So it does. All right. Um, so yeah. So uh, uh, Proteus will uh, basically show you. He he unlocks the uh, the double door so you can go downstairs. He's like, please uh, do do what you can uh, to to save to save her. Well, that is the plan. We will do our utmost best. And um, Elena says this in the most reassuring voice that she is capable of. I don't know if you want me to roll for that. I'm just trying to make him feel better. Um, you could roll persuasion. Sure. We'll uh, we'll do the best we can, but you know, shit happens. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what is the marching we order going to be? We'd have downstairs? advantage on that because we just, you know. Yes, you would definitely have advantage on that roll. Uh, I think. Oh, Twenty-four. Okay. Uh, I think Arathius is far ahead of us. Okay. Well, I can't be that far because apparently I had to wait for the door to get unlocked. 
Sure. Yeah. All right, uh, Arathius, why don't you give me a perception check? So as you make your way down to the door, just as you kind of come around that little bend in the stairs, you see how the, the staircase kind of goes down and then it kind of arcs around. Just when you get to that bend and you see the door that leads down into the, the downstairs, you see something shimmer with the door. Oh, there might be an enchantment on the door. Anybody want to make a check on that? Is there a check on that? Uh, you could make a... Uh, it would be Detect Magic. Which I oh, don't think a... anybody has. No. Not no. today, no. I do. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, excellent. Polish Mind Detector it is. Alright. So go ahead, Chris, go. And mm -hmm. for, for anybody that's watching, yes, our barbarian has spells because he's a druid barbarian, which I think is an awesome uh, multi-class for a centaur. Yes, yes. I'm liking it so far. His inspiration is a dwarf with a green beard. Right. There's my detect magic. All right. Um, so you do not detect any magic on the door. looks like a normal door to me actually yeah Arathius a, a door <laughs> nothing special all right remember me <laughs> I said I guess I'm gonna set off the trap Hopefully there is no trap, but I'll just say it how I expect it to go. Okay. All right. So as you uh, reach forward to open the door, your hand sticks to it. And then teeth form on the door. Ah! The door's not a door. It's a jar. It's a jar. Yes. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> it is... Mm -hmm. It, it bites you for six, and then six acid damage as its saliva starts to eat into your flesh. Oh, God. That's Ow. nasty. Well, there goes my 12 hit points. By the way, where did everyone go on the map? We are way over on the side. Yeah. Top left. Gotcha. I am at zero from the mimicky door. All right. Reinitiative or? So I take it we hear him cry out. You do hear him cry up and you hear like this, like chomp, 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 chomp. I am. This is gonna move people ever so slightly. I would like to, I suppose, I can't really see him past, past everyone else. I'm sure you can see past me. Yeah, yeah but the centaur is not short. <laughs> this is fair. <laughs> <laughs> he takes up a lot of space. <laughs> yeah. It's my best initiative ever. Hey, if everybody wants to roll their initiative. Well, not as quite as good as the earlier rolls. Still better than I was rolling in Fallout. Hey. I go first. You go first. Okay. Um. I'm gonna move up just enough to touch Arathius, but hopefully not have to touch the door. Yep. And I'm gonna cure wounds. Okay. 
and as I'm curing him, because I have to touch him to do it, can I pull him away from the door? Um, you can you can try. It is a it is a strength check to pull him free. Strength check. Yeah. Okay. Oh, neat. That's cool. I'm not very strong, so I apologize in advance, B. Oh, What's that? oh, hey, look at that! Apparently you care enough, you found your strength. Yes. Alright. So the the siren just kind of freaks out, and she, like, heals him and grapples him and flies back at the same time. Okay. Uh, so it is it has half speed because you're moving him, so... Uh, you, 5, 10, 15, 20... So yeah, you can you can pull him a little bit. You basically you have pulled him free and backed up about five feet from it. Yeah, that's that's literally all I wanted to do. Okay. Uh, that will bring us to Sophia. Uh, Sophia is switching from her mace to her crossbow. Okay, and uh, the, you can smell that like the the acid. Uh, that it had, you can you can smell that uh, acidity in the air. Uh, you're not sure if it's from the creature or from uh, Arathius's uh, wounds, but you can smell it. Yeah, either way, it's bad. Um, uh, it smells like somebody yacked up. Yeah, kind of. Um, can Don't I... Don't say yak when there's a minotaur in the room. <laughs> <laughs> what about my cousin? Um... Can I see past um, Agri enough to be able to hit the door? Uh, yes, he's not a large creature, so... Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, yes, I'm going to try to shoot with my crossbow. And uh, she will yell out to uh, Arathius. Uh, Arathius, are you upright? Not quite yet. Yeah, I do imagine. Sorry, go ahead. A bit dismayed at that. <laughs> Not quite yet. I imagine Helena and Arathius are both kind of on their butts. Probably on those yeah. stairs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of like scrambling backwards, like oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. Very reminiscent of the of the alien game last night, but so far uh, much better for the party. <laughs> At least I'm not just a talking head. <laughs> uh, Deacon. Uh, question from where I am: Can I move like through other players' squares, or do they lock? Uh, you can, but it's considered to be difficult terrain, so it takes half your movement to move through them. Oh, that's a change. So okay. you, you could get you could get between uh, Agrius and Helena. Yep. Yeah, I saw that without much problem. Yeah. And that's slightly less than 20 feet, so I'll throw a hand axe at it. Okay. Pretty good with those hand axes. Yeah, just saying. It's, it's a good intro to and back up the spear and shoot. I have to double check. I think it's calculating your plus two for your dueling style into the throwing. So it would actually be two less damage, but still a solid, solid hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thinks it's a piercer? Um, no, uh, the dueling fighting style that you have gives you plus two damage if you have a weapon in one hand and no weapon in the other. And I think it's counting that plus two in for throwing because of the way I've got the attack coded. Ah, gotcha. It's the you get the plus two for melee only because you're used to fighting with one weapon. Yeah, yeah, spear and board. Yep. Uh, Kyra, Kyra is going to give you. She's gonna start singing again. Her. Uh, 
Yeah, she will do the, the Song of Heroes again. That seems to be a popular tune today, uh, since you guys are doing all kinds of heroic stuff. Any requests? Play that one song! Freebird. Uh, the Mimic. The Mimic is uh, the mimic is going to use its action to uh, to shape change into its kind of amorphous blobby form type thing full of like teeth and tongue and acid and uh, but that is its action to, to change from being a door into something that's actually capable of moving uh, and it will start to move it does not seem to be terribly fast it seems to be like kind of like oozing and and undulating over the stairs but it does not seem to be fast Gross. Ooh, undulating. Yeah, pretty much. Anything with undulating and tongue. It's just, no, no. That's, no. Especially when there's acid involved. That's just gross. Hey, well, you could have a bunch of eyeballs. Oh, God, that would be worse. Yes, true. Uh, Arathius. Um, I will note, too, uh, a house rule that I use, uh, one that I've stolen gleefully from Critical Role, is using a potion on yourself is a bonus action. Using a potion on someone else is a full action. Why did it have to come after me? It could have just stayed where it was. Suppose this brings me back to the I can choose to um, <laughs> take a uh, disengage action. Oh, come on. It loves you and just wants to lick you. Yeah, you could you could squeeze into like this corner here. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, coming through, coming through. Oh, pa pardon me, I, I need a moment. Oh. Um, and uh, Arathia, since you were uh, up close and personal with it, uh, give me an intelligence check. Yeah. I am smart. Uh, yeah, you figure you are probably... A you're you are probably about twice as fast as it is given how it was kind of undulating up the stairs uh and you know that uh, agrius and um uh, and sophia are both faster than you so we are much faster than this thing if we keep moving uh that will bring us to agrius all right well i'm going to uh, so Agri basically um, sheets his uh, scythe, or scimitar rather, and basically holds out his hand as flame leaves towards the mimic. Oof. Damn. Nice. Burn the door down. So yeah, so your your flame disappears into that uh, that amoeba-like substance. Um, but where your flame hits, it does it does char and blacken. Uh, you can tell that it did take some damage from the fire. It's not liquidy. Agri will also move back. Okay. Uh, that will bring us around to Helena, who is now sees this thing kind of pulsating up the stairs towards you. There's so many good movement words you get to use with oozes. So, oh, yeah. Helena nopes the fuck out of there. <laughs> and I'm gonna go somewhere I can still have line of sight-ish. Okay. So, here, I guess. Um, yeah, you can kind of like... Will that work? You can poke your head around the door. Cool. Um, I'm gonna assume it understands Vicious Mockery. Uh... Can I... Would, the, would it understand Vicious Mockery? I, vicious Mockery, I don't think it needs to understand. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it has to be I able to hear you, but does not need to understand you. Yeah. I will scream out, You look like you were built by a Ikea! Vicious Mockery. I've heard of him. He's a terrible carpenter. Ooh. He is! Apparently it's not Swedish. 
Apparently not. Apparently not. It's like, what the fuck's an Ikea? No, it's like, no. Ikea is better than you give it credit for. <laughs> Alright, well that's all I got. Oh, um, I will give... I agree, a Bardic Inspiration Dice. Okay. Uh, that will bring us to Sophia. Yes. Uh, Sophia is going to... Uh... Ready out of the crossbow bolt and shoot at it. Okay. Again. Hopefully better than she did last time. She definitely looks angry. Not that that's helping. Her her temper is apparently getting the better of her. <laughs> you do have it rerolled. It's it must be all that red on her clothing. Um sure. We do have the rerolled. Yes. From she yes. sang yeah. again, right? Yep. Someone sang. Let's look at a shot. No pun intended. Much better. Sixteen. That is definitely a hit. Oh, so the cross the crossbolt sinks into it, and it, it does dissolve slightly from the acid. Uh, basically, you're not going to be able to get that one back. Yeah. But it does sink into it. Uh, Deacon, you are up. I'm going to move back a smidge, and then I'm going to launch my second hand axe at it. Okay. That hand axe sinks into it. Uh, this thing is, you're seeing like it, parts of it are starting to, like it's starting to leave parts of it behind on the stairs uh, as it uh, as it moves. But it's uh, it's still there. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. As Kara... It's like a scene from the Terminator. Mm. Uh, the blobinator. Except, except more undulating as opposed to crawling. I just need to look something up here. Mimic, what is best in life? Whoa, 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 whoa. was gross. Mm -hmm. But it's no, sorry. eating and undulating replication. It's basically a shogoth with the ability to shape change, isn't it? My understanding. Yeah, pretty much. Bear with me here, guys. I need to check something out. Yeah. Got it. So Kyra is going to step back. She's not going to sing this turn so you guys don't get the reroll. But as this thing moves up the stairs, she's going to like hold out her hand. And uh, you hear her say something under her breath. And uh, it shrinks in size. It's a mini minute. Uh, it's turn. You're going to have to teach me that spell. I'm glad you find this amusing, you insignificant fuck. It is going to move forward and it is going to try to bludgeon Deacon. Ooh. Ouch. So that is five points of bludgeoning damage and you are stuck to it as it like slaps you with a pseudopod, basically wraps around your arm and kind of holds you tight. And then it, you can see it, like, as it wraps the pseudopod around you, it basically makes sure that it grows its mouth in the right place to bite you. 
you. All the better. How do you like me now? Uh, Arathius. Ah, uh, so the bright side is not engaged with me. That is, uh, you're still within, like, when you move out of its range is when it gets a tax of opportunity. Smite it. Listen here, you son of a fish. It's time for the, the good old classic Eldritch Blasto. A six is a miss because you have disadvantage. Yeah, so I will. Oh, we don't have the reroll, do we? Don't have the reroll. Dang. Uh, and that will bring us to Agrius. All right. Uh, same situation, different turn. Uh, Agri basically puts out his hand and fire comes out. Right. Um. I should know, Deacon, that would have been four or less damage. I forgot the reduction penalty. What? Uh, because because Kyra reduced it, its attacks do a D4 less damage. Because it's little. Because it's little. Oh, so I take one, not five. Yes. Uh, so with an 11, the uh, the produce fire hits it, but it seems to, it seems to just absorb it to no effect. So I got a Bardic Inspiration dice. Is that for damage or roll? Uh, it is for attack, saving throw, or ability checks. Okay, never mind. Uh, that will bring us around to Helena. Helena's pissed off this time. Now she's going to attempt Dissonant Whispers. Okay. So it has to make a Wisdom save, I believe. Yes, it is a Wisdom and... save. Yep. Then it's still big path. So it does make its wisdom save. It does. So it takes half the damage. Yeah, it takes half damage and it, uh, it doesn't move away. But I still... Um, so you guys see Helena's mouth moving, but you guys can't hear what's coming out. But it seems to be like cringing in pain. Yeah, there's like a like a reverb set out through like the, the gel like substance of this thing. It definitely it definitely felt whatever Helena is doing. Yeah. The jello is wobbling. Uh Sophia. Uh, Sophia is going to quick, take a quick look at one of her cantrips. Um, back, you disgusting creature. And she's going to flick her hand toward it and cast Sacred Flame. Okay. Defiant. All the all the saving throws Here, that I fail yes. in my other D and D game. <laughs> uh, Deacon, you are up. You are grappled by this thing, which means your movement is zero, but it does not otherwise impede you. You think you have me trapped in with you? No, you're trapped with me, and I stab it with my spear. Ooh, solid hit. Take that. Uh, for anybody that's watching and is wondering why it did critical hits twice, it's because he's got the piercer feet, which gives him an extra die uh, when he scores a critical with the piercer weapon. Uh, but with that, you drive your spear into it, and then like your spear hits, and then you kind of push forward through it, kind of, you know how you can like cut jello with like a dull instrument just by kind of pushing through it 
And this thing just goes like splurt. Such a lovely sound. Splurt. Mm. Yeah. Please tell me the temple has something resembling running water. <laughs> you can bathe outside. Isn't there a pool? There was water back in front of the water side on. <laughs> yes. I, I'm the not actual a icon of Sidon. That, I, I'm not a religious person, but that might be slightly sacrilegious. Just saying. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, good times, people. Good time. Well, let's mm. see what was behind the mimic. It's uh, the way into the grotto. Awesome. Other people can go first. I left a spot because Arathius is still despite his being returned to his wounded state, still like, oh, I gotta go see what's down here. Yeah. Agri hands over the potion that he has to Arathius and says, drink. Arathius should have one. Cairo will basically, when uh, when uh, Agri hands his over, then she'll hand hers over to him. So, um, making your way through this no longer mimic the door, uh, you do make your way down into a, what looks like an underground grotto. It is very warm here. Uh, the room is lit by torches and filled with vaporous mists, uh, steaming hot springs. Uh, and you hear water cascading, uh, like there's an underground river that feeds into this. Oh, thank the gods. Uh, hello. I've heard there's a witch down here. I'm a warlock. I thought we might want to compare notes. One second, let me drop people oh onto a map. I feel like that's going to be a persuasion check. Vaguely from out the distance, you hear. Are you talking to me? Well, I don't see anyone else here, so I must be talking to you. No, I mean, are you talking to me? Um, so yeah, so you make your way down and, uh, you see there's, uh, in the central rock, there are some, uh, some carpets here. It looks like, um, it's kind of like laid out like somebody would, uh, rest upon them. Uh, but you don't hear any, don't hear any sounds or anything. I say it sounds a little too quiet down here. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't need like to see, so I think I'll check down this path. And you do, uh, at that point, hear a a scream, like a a, a male screaming out. Huh. Agony, battle cry, something else. Definitely agony and cut short. Away! You asked. <laughs> Pointless heroism. Away! Yes, Sophia will go running down that little face along the north wall. Okay. 
That's all I care about. Um, so uh, as you kind of come around the uh, the corner there, Arathius, you see a beautiful woman in golden raiment stretched out above the underground river, held captive by tendrils of animated water. But what really draws your attention is in the chamber behind you, you see a hideous blue-skinned woman cackling as she pulls the knife out of a terrified acolyte. I don't suppose you're a knight. No? Okay. Well, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. And the, this, Just... this, like, tall, gangly, blue-skinned uh, female creature with, like, long limbs and talons uh, just turns and licks her lips as she looks at you. And, Good evening, darling. I hope we're not intruding. Uh, but as she looks at Arathia, she says, Oh, my sisters have a new plaything. Hmm. Oh. Yes, we, we come and go. Yeah, as need be, you know. You guys are probably going to want to roll initiative. Hey, my best initiative yet. Excellent. Not a trend kept by the rest of the group, I see. Not my best, no. but not half bad. Okay. So how about them sisters, eh? Alright. So, at the start of its turn, any humanoid creature within 30 feet of her... Oh, yeah. Uh, must make a wisdom saving throw. Not today. Alrighty. Is that even through like like walls? Yeah. How about us who are still way back around the corner? No, nope, you have to you have to start your turn and be able to see her horrific appearance. Yeah, Excellent. you guys are fine. Yeah, is this? I, a... however, am not. You're you're around the corner. You can't see. Oh, her. I can't see her. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, you could potentially make an argument that Agrius might be able to when she moves into the, the hallway proper, but you definitely can't. Yeah. Agrius passed. Yep. Sorry, I didn't realize that this was a chunk of wall. Yeah. Uh, but she is going to close oh. very quickly. Ooga booga. She basically jumps into the river and swims and then kind of like uh, dolphin jumps out onto the land. Very graceful. That was very impressive, I must say. The hop like judge gives it an 8.5. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as she does, she kind of spins around with her claws, but uh, with her like wet stringy hair in her face, she can't quite make out where Arathius is. Uh, but as she strikes out her claw, she's like, my sisters owe me a new toy. They shouldn't get one. And that brings us to Arathias. Maybe you should stop killing her toys. Keep it down over there. Well, maybe if you made yourself a little bit more approachable, you might find yourself some more toys. Yeah. Little lipstick. Mm -hmm. Dang disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, that will bring us to Helena. Hey, um, time to burn my last level one spell. So we are gonna do. What? Oh, don't look directly yeah. at the beast. I did not use three level one spells. What the fuck? I only used two. Why do I not have my other level one spell? 
may not have done a short rest after the first uh, the first session. Yeah. Can I fix that? I, think it's... I got it for you. Thank you. Um, where it's rolling twice every time is that also impacting or no? Uh, yes, that would. So yeah, doesn't it whispers again? So Helena again, her mouth starts moving, but you guys can't hear her. But it needs to make a roll. It Shut. does do it, so it takes half damage. So three, I think. Yeah. So, so Chris, we should have put short rest at some point. Uh, you guys haven't rested yet, so you don't have any of your stuff back. Uh, but you should, um, on your hand axes, change the amount to two. That way, you got the the proper number of hand axes for throwing or whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah, she, she starts mouthing something, and then the witch again starts screaming and racking in pain. And cackling maniacally. Well, I, I guess if she's a masochist, sure. Yep. Uh, she claims her sisters are the fates, so that's kind of par for the course. Yep. Uh, Deacon. Uh, yeah, okay. Who's? Seems a little tight. In here. How can I move to get to melee in this case? Um, uh, you can't really, because the the water would be difficult terrain, and moving through allies is difficult terrain. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Mm-hmm. You could you could close with her, but not attack. Is there any way I can get in behind her somehow? Uh. Mm. You could you could actually get to here. It would take it would take your action to get there, but you could get to there. I will absolutely do that. Okay. That's a lot of like you know. Excuse me, excuse me, coming through, coming through. Excuse me, excuse me. Splish, splish, splish. Splish, splish, splash, splash, splash. That's okay. I need to get washed off anyways. Uh, that will bring us to uh, Agrius. Okay, uh, you see Agri break out into his rage. Okay. And attempt to hit. Man, Horseman is awfully angry. Ooh. Oh yeah, awfully angry. You, you those ancestral the, nightmares are being ridden. <laughs> you see the hooves come up, the scimitar come back out and just swings into this desolate creature. There's a there's a lot of pent up aggression in the centaur apparently. Evidently, yes. Uh, Sophia. Uh, Sophia. And not quite see her around that corner. I don't think. Um, but she's going to step. The water here isn't boiling, correct? Uh, it is not. There's like Excellent. there's vapors floating over it, and there's low mist, but it's not steaming. Uh, she will take a couple of steps then into the water. Hopefully, it'll clean off her robes a bit. Uh, and she will uh, try sacred flame again. One point of fire. Radiant fire. It's better than no points. <laughs> One point is better than no points. So yeah, uh, maybe maybe there's something supernatural about her. Maybe it's the fact that she's like dripping wet, but your sacred flame doesn't seem to find any real purchase with that. Yeah, just kind of dries her out a little. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I forgot to throw Kyra onto the initiative here. Let's fix that. Poor Kyra. Just like, oh, hey, I caught up, guys. That's for me, but. Uh, sorry, there was a there was a really pretty rug over there. I was looking at. My bad. Um, she will she will use Song of Heroes. That seems to be her best option right now. Uh, the sea hag. Now her horrific parents. So everybody that is within thirty feet that can see her must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. See, this is what happens when I let my clothing get bloody. Okay. All my rolls just go to hell. Okay. Okay. See, I don't have to make it because I succeeded the first time. I'm immune for 24 hours. Exactly. Uh, so, oh, great? Uh, so Sophia failed unless you want to use the reroll from the Song of Heroes. Yes, I will use the reroll because that's that's terrible. It's probably not going to get better. Oh, <laughs> or it might. <laughs> All right. Uh, so everybody made it. That is that is unfortunate. That means that rather than doing cool stuff, she's just going to hack at Arathius with her claws. Oh man, she just hits. So, so she brings those claws uh, like through Arrakis and like blood sprays everywhere. I have a reaction to that one. You do. Suck it, Trebek. Nice. You hit me, now I hit you. Your sister said there were guards! I believe Arathius is, like, barely holding his intestines in. <laughs> yeah. Blood, blood not quite pouring, but coming freely through his lips while he holds his guts in, <laughs> laughing as it ignites oh. her in flame. That's a, that's a really tiny little health bar you got going on there. Just a little red nubbin. Okay. Uh, Arathius is up. Um, I, I will note that you do have flanking on her, so uh, advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. Oh, I like those words. <laughs> her sisters continue to send regard. Well, that... Wow, that was a break-even roll. I'm pretty sure that misses. It does. I... But my re-roll, however... Yeah. Wow, same result. Yeah, both times, huh? Alright, uh, so yeah, so as you line up your Eldritch Blast trying to find a shot, she, like, turns around because Deacon's behind her, and you manage to, like, zord her, uh, knock her back a little bit. She definitely... She felt it, for sure. I'd hope so. Uh, Helena. Hey, um, all I got left is Vicious Mockery, so... Hey, do. I did 17 to her. She's got to be feeling it some I, I would love to insult somebody to death again. I really yeah, would. Mock away. There's so many things to pick on. Right? So, hmm. Give me a sec. I just want to find a good one. It's like shooting a duck in a barrel. Right? So, uh, Helena screams, You are the feces that is created when shame eats too much stupidity. <laughs> Vicious mockery. Oh, that oh, she fails! That one cut deep. <laughs> that one hurt. That, that one definitely hurt. Did it hurt enough? 
Not enough. Damn. Hey, group. Uh, Deacon is up. I need, you have advantage because you're flanking with uh, Arathius. That's the reason Arathius didn't disengage, by the way, Josh. Yeah, advantage. That's nice. I am going to stab her with my spear. So, well, there's a reroll. There is. <laughs> I told you to reroll. Much better. A good solid hit, too. I, um, so, yeah, so, uh, again, like, after Arathius hits her, she turns back to, to face him, allowing you to basically get your spear up, like, between, um, be, like, you miss vitals if she has such a thing but you do this black ichor leaks out when you pull the spear back she is definitely definitely hurt yay uh, that brings us to Agrius the fates call to her finish her yeah finish this bitch you can Ooh. do it Agri and so once again, Agri takes a scimitar and just continues the whack. So as they uh, as they say, how would you like to do this? So yeah, Agri sees the opportunity between the spear that just recently was put in by Deacon, and uh, he goes ahead and takes a scimitar right over the head and decaps. Uh -huh. Uh, of note, since this game was both the first uses of Hellish Rebuke, it is black fire uh, with silver letters disappearing within it. Ooh, that's cool. That's creepy. Well, it goes along you know, with like... my Eldritch, Eldritch Blast because the fates are basically writing the end of their tale. True. They're like polar opposites. The and with that, the uh, the uh, animated water that is holding uh, holding Versi disperses back into the uh, back into the river. Good good work, guys. Good work. Dude, uh, drink a freaking potion, please. Potions are finite. Spells are forever. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out of them. I'm not, though. I do, however, need to get this. And she looks down at the... Her own bloodstains all over her clothing. I need to get this off if I'm going to be effective at all. I'm gonna get out of the water. Is it coming out in the river? Yeah, is her is is the blood stains coming out of her white robes? Oh yes, yeah. Oh good. She like dumps herself a couple of times. Um, I will move up to check on the acolyte if they are even. You mean the oracle? Oh no, the acolyte inside the. Yeah, the the oracle was uninjured. Yeah, no, the uh, the acolyte is is uh, definitely definitely deceased. Oh, okay. I do not have animated dead, so. Um, but uh, but Versi will basically, uh, as the animated water releases her, she falls into the into the river, kind of unglamorously, uh, but pulls her pulls herself uh, out of the water. <laughs> unglamorously, but we're all sitting here going, "God damn it!" She even looks good falling in ugly. She uh, she does have a certain presence about her. A cleaning we will go. A cleaning we will go. Sorry, we were unable to uh, make it in time to save your acolyte. He, uh, he was but the last of the ones that this 
creature destroyed. At least he's been avenged. I'm not, uh, I'm not much for vengeance. She looks over at, uh, at the group, she's like, perhaps it was fated. Yeah, possibly. And uh, then she sees Kyra and she's like, and she kind of like, holds out her arms and Kyra kind of like um, runs forward uh, in an almost childish way and like gives her gives her a big hug it's like these are I think these are the heroes um, we found them they killed the boar they rescued you and first he's kind of like calm down and this is like the most kind of animated you've seen Kyra in a little while so like, calm down we will we will see And she uh, she looks over down at uh, at Sophia cleaning off in the stream. She's like, um, "We have, I have soaps and perfumes if you would like." Soap. Soap would be so appreciated. And she uh, she goes back into the into the little uh, chamber there where the acolyte was killed. Um, and there is what looks like a bed in here, and there's like piles of treasure here. There's like black pearls and emeralds and brooches and just like all kinds of jewelry and ornaments and things that have obviously been given to her over the over the years or decades or centuries. Hey, Sophia, maybe she has a couple pearls she can spare. Possibly. Um, let me get cleaned off. I can't conduct any sort of holy energy looking like this. No, no, that's, that's fine. Hmm, this probably explains our young bird's reasoning behind it's only just money, and there's lots of it. Are you what? When she was throwing money around earlier. Oh. The other bird. Money, money comes and money goes. But yes, if we can find two pearls worth at least a hundred gold, that'd be nice. Uh, I will see what I can find. And at the as she's as she's talking, she walks over to the uh, the the creature. And basically starts searching it saying like let's see if my father sent you with anything it's like oh and she like just kind of like over her shoulder she's like holds out a dagger for somebody to grab or i got, i'm standing there so i guess i'll take yeah. it from her hand <laughs> arathius made his way back to the much larger general area so he can sit down for a bit Yeah, I'll uh, grab it to hold. Um, and she finds uh, she finds like a like a little pearl, and she just kind of holds that out, and it's like, uh, Arathius, and you know you haven't introduced yourself. Yes. Uh, the, you may as well have this. I'm sure I can find one for Sophia as well. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I. And then she pulls out this kind of like soggy wet letter and kind of like holds it kind of carefully, kind of waves her hands over it, uh, it casts a little bit of magic. Um, Helena, you would recognize that as press the digitation, basically just kind of cleaning it up, drying it out as she unfolds it. So. Oh, I see. Seems that my father has issues with my prophecies. Oh. 
he knew his time was coming to an end. Well, yeah, I suspect that any being, no matter who they are, would have issues with essentially the lack of existence. Well, let us, uh, let us indeed see um, if what Kyra believes is true. And she, she just oh. she moves over to that, uh, that middle rock where the carpets are and starts to like make herself comfortable. Helena being the siren that she is is like biting her tongue. Um, someone had given Sophia soap, yes? Yes, first, first he has a selection of soaps and perfumes and, and bathing stuff. Like you can tell that, that chamber there where the acolyte was killed is essentially her, her bedroom. Um, Sophia cleans herself off and then uh, as she's gradually making her way back to uh, Eretheus. take the time to uh, serve as my armor, my weaponry. Okay. Yeah, it's seen some wear and tear, especially after fighting the acidic mimic. Uh, but yeah, you can you can quite easily get it fixed up. Hold things back to sharp. That's all it's Exploding through a mimic is bad, dirty. And as uh, as Versai makes herself comfortable there, uh, you can see the, uh, the the mists and the vapors starting to swirl around her. And she's kind of inhales very deeply in the. And she motions for for each of you to to come forward. And as, uh, as each of you approach, she stares deep, deep, deeply into your eyes, uh, almost, like she, almost like she's seeing your soul. She says, yeah. You warriors who stand here gathered will be tested. The fates have revealed three great tasks that must be accomplished before you are ready to sail into the seas and face the titans. You must shape the silver fires of the Lost Forge in order to craft the tools you will need. You must claim the mighty weapons wielded against the Titans by the first Dragon Lord. And you must drink deep from the bottomless Dragon Horn, for it will, will reveal a vision I cannot see. But woe unto thee, for I have seen the end of all things. My father's anger cannot be quelled, and his sister schemes even now. Your quest may yet fail. And if it should, the sky will rain black fire, and the doom of Thylea will come. And then she looks to each of you in turn. She looks to, uh, to Aquius. My sister, Demetria. She knows more of your fate than even I. She will be able to answer questions or provide you with guidance. She looks at Sophia. Says, Sophia, your father is in need. You must visit him. She looks to Deacon. As with Agrius, 
and my sister Demetria. She possesses an item that once belonged to your family. <clears throat> she looks to Arathius. In order to become the bane of the evil dragons, you must seek out the forge keeper in the mithril mines. And she looks to Helena. It says, in order to find the secret of the curse that plagues you, you must speak with Damon, the ancient lich that guards the necropolis. He has information for you. And I will put those in your journal entries for you. Thank you. Yeah, when she spoke to Sophia, uh, Sophia kind of frowned and looked away. Uh, and I Helena was... just... Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Um, I also have the, uh, the prophecy that I will add there to the... So you should see those under journal entries. You should see one that says Epic Paths and one that says uh, The Prophecy. Cool. Don't see The Prophecy yet, but that might be under Handout. Uh, it's under Handout. Ah, there it is, yeah. And with that, oh. she kind of she kind of sinks back. Obviously, uh, somewhat tired of from whatever strain the uh, the visions have upon her. When um, the curse is mentioned, Helena just kind of like puffs her chest and fluffs her wings and. Uh. When she speaks to Rathius, he kind of li listens rapidly. He's like, oh, excellent progress. Thank you. Oh, good. The wounds seem to be sealing themselves. Are we taking a short rest here? Um, you're you're welcome to do so. I'd like a spell cast before we do. Yes. Well, certainly. Now that I'm not. Could since since we're gonna get some stuff back, do I the thing, gladly, and then I will sing. I will gladly help you. Um, so, Sophia will go over, and um, just run her hand gently down over his shoulder, and uh, cast cure wounds. May the blessings of Valus be upon you. Tell me about Phallus. You don't know about Phallus? No, I don't. There's a lot about this world that I don't know, and I'm curious to learn. She is the goddess of wisdom. I guess at this point, do we click short rest on our sheets? I... Uh, Yes, you can click short rest, and it will give you an option to use uh, to use hit dice. Before you do that, I'm going to sing Song of Rest. And I don't know how to use that. There we go. Song of Rest. To help. So the, the Song of Rest will give everybody five hit points. Uh, and then when you when you short rest, you spend about an hour or so down here. Um, you can uh, 
use whatever hit dice you feel you want to use up to two. Um, when you complete a long rest, which is you get a night's sleep, you get back half of your hit dice rounded up. I'm actually at max hit points. I'm at 15 now of my 16. I am back at max. Oh, God damn it. So, how do you use your hit dice? Uh, when you do a when you do a short when you hit the short rest button, it should ask you how many hit dice you want to use. Do you have to? Uh, nope. So I just press rest and not roll. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, and then uh, for uh, for a fighter, the short rest will also uh, reset your uh, action surge. And um, I think uh, second uh, and second wind as well. So I don't like to be invisible. Which fortunately I have didn't hadn't uh, needed yet. Good. Yeah. It, it's super handy when you need it in like a in a clutch situation. Oh hell's yeah! Some things here could have gone sideways, and I might need to hit points back sooner rather than later. I only got back two, which is fine, because I needed one, but no, wow. Okay. Uh, so the whole time that you guys are, are resting, feel free to, to talk amongst yourself. Um, and then uh, when you're done your rest, uh, Cairo will address you. Yeah, so Sophia sings uh, like a sea shanty. Or not Sophia, I'm sorry, Anina. Um, <laughs> Helena. <laughs> I don't know, I want to hear Sophia sing too. <laughs> she can join in if she likes. Helena sings you like a, a sea shanty. Um, something that's more upbeat to make everybody kind of feel better. She'll chuckle at some of the lyrics. Mm. I am by the builds a boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> something to the... <laughs> Thinking more along the lines of like something from Great Big Sea, but... Oh, I'm sure at some point they've sung that. Mm. Some lovely, like, Irish drinking song. Great. Yes. Absolutely. If I had a million dinar, if I had a million dinar. <laughs> Buy you some healing potions. <laughs> oh, healing potions are great. I thought. <laughs> when you use them. Or, or hey, a nice potions, reliable potions are finite. Spells recover over time. Or a it's nice reliable happens. field. <laughs> Where? You you don't know anything about the five gods? I don't know a lot about the five gods. Hmm. And you said. Where? I'm sorry. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Arisia. But you don't know about the gods. I actively worship the god of battle. Oh, by Thor. Yay. And to the shock of nobody, I suspect. Mm, not particularly. I, I could have hoped for Vulcan, but... Eh, one must pick the gods that will favor them living longer in my profession. Huh? The, the, the gods, the battle. Yeah, the mm. gods just tend not to like me in general. So. Would, wouldn't a god of battle be mostly indifferent simply because a fight is a fight? Yes, but if you're dead, you can't keep fighting. But if both sides venerate the god of battle, then someone's going to continue on to fight again. The god is pleased whenever there is a fight, but the reality of it is, is the worshipping hopefully means that you will end up well on things and you will not succumb to death during the battle. It's, it's just normal. It's what we do. Well, you should feel well that none of us have succumbed to battle. 
yes, this group is intact, and that is what my God helps to ensure us that we may continue the battle further. Give it the old collegiate of the bards try and all, but uh, here we are. Yes, the forces that have aligned against us seem to be rather um, interested in knocking us off our course. And that's why sometimes you have to find a cheat. Cheat. Agree mm -hmm. takes out his scimitar and starts to wash it in the nearby river. At least clean it. Some soap. <laughs> now this is more my cousin's purview than my own, but Arathius gets up, basically dunks himself completely underwater for a bit. Sophia holds the soap up to him. When he surfed, a hand reaches up, grabs the soap, he starts scrubbing underwater. I agree, but so you like the use of my whetstone to make sure your smitter is good? He just nods and makes his way over. I hand you my uh, whetstone. And he begins to sharpen it, almost like he knows how to use it. Ella Almost just removes her board. jacket that she's been wearing this entire time. Because it's hot and steamy down here and she's in leather. It's good and hot in here. No, no. <laughs> Take no, no. off all your gnome. No. It's just the jacket. So all your gnomes. She does... Um, Underneath the jacket, she's got like a black matching corset, and she wears like black leather pants to go with it. So after everybody is uh, rusted and uh, and clean, uh, during the time uh, Proteus, uh, Proteus, and uh, some of the attendees have come down to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, so they are tending to uh, to Versi, uh, but he does he does stop to uh, thank you. Uh, the, the 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 future of Thylia might be bleak, but there is always hope. You are most welcome. The uh, the people of the land will look to your actions as a sign of of things to come. Uh, do not seek fame or fortune, but show them the meaning of heroism. We are here to serve. Uh, make, your, make yourselves beacons of light as we enter a time of darkness. And go with the, go with the blessing of the temple, and he will, uh, he will pass to, um, to Deacon a coin. What is this? This is a signifier of the Dragon Lords. Uh, and you look at the coin, and it's like a, it's like a kind of a, a dirty golden color, um, and it's got a, a human face carved on one side and a, and a ship on the other side, and it does emit a very faint golden light. <laughs> Historically, do I know anything about this since I'm a historian? Uh, you can make a history roll. Oof. So the twenty nine. As you as you look at this coin, you you realize that these coins were uh, given by the dragon lords to uh, signify people that were under their protection or as tokens of favor or things of that nature. Uh, the the human face uh, is the face of uh, what exactly was his name? Xander. I remember Xander's last name. Let me see if we find it here. It seems kind of funny that one of my best roles was a history role. <laughs> What are the odds? Uh, yes, uh, Xander uh, Huroth. 
who was the oath sworn of Balmitria, the leader of the Dragon Lords, and who essentially founded the Order of the Dragon Lords and led him across the ocean to the New World. Uh, he was killed uh, over 500 years ago uh, during uh, during battle with the Titans. Uh, the other side of the coin shows his uh, his ship, a, uh, a legendary ship known as. Uh, the Altros. Uh, much like, you know, how, like, Jason is syn synonymous with the Argos. It's that sort of relationship. Gotcha. Uh, so it's a, it is a famous ship in Thylian history that was, he was the captain of. Um, and the ship has been missing for centuries and is, is largely considered myth and legend. Uh, you also notice that while you while you've got the coin, um, your mind is flooded with wor words and symbols in uh, in a previously unknown language. You don't know what exactly it is, uh, but then you think when when Kyra cast the, the spell uh, that sh uh, that reduced the uh, the mimic you now understand the words that she was using in that in incantation. I mean, you don't know what they mean. You're not an arcanist by any stretch. But you understand the words that she used. Whoa. Uh, and then after Protus goes over to, uh, to, to help Versi get uh, settled, and she does find another another pearl. Uh, so you guys have two 100 gold piece pearls. As a, for uh, people that need them for identify spells. Excellent. I like having temporary hit points. Plus the ability to cast identify. Yes. Deacon kind of shakes his head. I had I've heard about these in the historical journals. Never ever thought I'd find one. Interesting. And the Kyra just uh, looks at him and says, "They are they are quite rare. I'm sure it will. Uh, I'm sure it will be useful in the times to come." I seem to understand the words in your arcane languages, but I don't know what they mean. She just smiles and says, "Like, interesting. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, well, maybe, maybe you'll decide to, to pick up the practice. Or well, more importantly, perhaps being able to read and understand the words of this old language can serve us going forward. Uh, perhaps. Um." While you were recuperating, um, I spoke of Versi, and I believe I have some insight into her vision. Um, the weapons of the Dragon Lords were forged by the god Vulcan in the Mithril Forge and capable of wounding the Titans and any descended from them. The Dragon Lords were buried with their armaments in the tomb of Telemach, a necropolis in the Mithril Mountains. No one ever goes there, and it is guarded by an undead gatekeeper known as Damon, who must be paid with a special kind of coin before he will allow anyone entrance. So perhaps this coin is the one that he seeks. Well, stands a good chance, I suspect. Is this the lich that others have been referred to? Yeah, I think I have to talk to that guy. I believe so. Your guards in the crop, so tell them. To shape the silver fires of the Lost Forge, I believe that vision refers to the Mithril Forge, which is used to construct the weapons. The forge can be used to build powerful magical items. Um, nobody knows where it is, though. There is a clan of dwarves 
uh, in uh, Astoria nearby, which may know information. The dwarves have knowledge of Mithril. And the Horn of Bal uh, Balmitria. That is a, it's an actual dragon horn from a famed silver dragon lost in battle against the, uh, the Gigans. It was recovered by the priests and consecrated by the five gods. Repeatedly has magical powers. It's stowed in a reliquary in the city of Astoria. Uh, a reliquary known as the Dragon Shrine. Um, so that's the best I can interpret her visions. I think it might be you. I wish I wish there was more information, but so two reasons to go to Astoria, two reasons to go to the Necropolis, and a bunch of reasons following both of those to go to find the Mithril Four. Yeah. Um, Let's just hope the papacy doesn't control this regacy around here. Yeah. And uh, she okay, will yeah. she will look at Sophia and say, uh, perhaps three reasons to go to Astoria. Okay, well now I know it's Ooh. Perhaps he can put down his wine glass long enough to speak to me. Well, I mean Deacon will be there, and that should be interesting to him. Sophia. Yes? Sophia gives Arathius just kind of a dark look when he says that, by the way. But then she looks to Deacon, and she's back to her normal, peaceful, placid self. Yes. It slides off Arathius' back, like water off a dock. He's used to dark. Would you prefer if we attended to your father first? Conversely, I don't think Deacon is as used to such looks as I am. Not particularly, but... It would get it out of the way. And if someone understands family, certainly I would like it. No idea. No idea. Family is an interesting thing. Someone understands how cruel gods can be. We will be there to support you. Thank you. It's very kind. I'm not kind, but I will be there. Well, I don't think anyone would deign to accuse me of kindness anyway. We'll see. Maybe you'll learn kindness as we go. Ooh, that would be most interesting. You are a bit of an odd duck, aren't you? <laughs> I am no duck. I'm not an avian. It's a snake. Sophia looks over at Agrius. Do you have any preference where we go first? Agri stops sharpening his uh, scimitar with the whetstone provides it back to Deacon, and says one word, Astoria. Perhaps there's the option to kill multiple birds in one journey. Is there anything else on the way between here and Astoria that we can take care of? Um, there, you guys only traveled 
like maybe 15 miles from the the uh, the sour vintage, and the sour vintage is like 20 miles from Astoria. You, you guys are like a day away from Astoria where you are currently. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> well, Deacon, I'm sure that if there's anything to do with uh, how things are progressing, it will find us in the most opportune of time. Sorry. All is well. We should probably pack up and get moving. What time of day is uh, At this point, it is... Rest it for an hour. It's probably only like mid-afternoon. I mean, you guys are somewhat tired because you did travel to get here and then adventured and stuff. Well, how far away from are we back to the inn? How long? Um, you would you would probably get back to the inn by nightfall. Does everyone agree that this is probably a better idea than sleeping out the woods? Would it be faster to go to the inn or to get to town, the next town? Uh, yeah, you, the. The uh, Sour Vintage is in between you and uh, Astoria. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go to the end. So, yeah, that, that's a no-brainer then. Yeah. We could go back to the end and the end. Yeah, a safe place to sleep. <laughs> well, a welcoming place to sleep. Well, at least it has a roof. It was a lovely roof. So yeah, basically, on this uh, on this overhead map, the uh, the Oracle's Temple is like uh, actually the Oracle's Temple would probably be about here. We can't see it yet. Oh, I already transitioned. I see where you spoke. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so the Oracle's Temple is like in this general area. Gotcha. And the sour the sour vintage is like around here. And then Astoria is right here. Oh, wow. And I just have to yeah, say... you know, just a massive sun centaur too, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's totally a what Agrius aspires to be. Yeah. I just, I love the look of this over... He aspires. Yeah, I, I, I love the way they had this overland map put together. And, you know, past the story is the Mithril Mountains anyway, so. Yep. Right. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so you guys make it back to the uh, the Sour Vintage in time for uh, Nightfall. Uh, the, 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 uh, the tavern is fairly busy. It is... No, got a good crowd going on. Uh, Itella is busy serving people, but you know, as soon as you come in, she basically scoots some people out of a out of a seat to make space for you. Uh, she uh, orders a basically a, a round of drinks uh, for you to to wet your whistle as you kind of get comfortable. Uh, definitely, definitely, kind of like makes you feel at home and welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, just in like the, the day or so that you've been that you've been gone, um, the the people the people that generally come to the the taverna for their their lunch and their breakfast and and things of that nature, the the locals from the small farms around, um, you know, when you walk in, they kind of nudge one another and you know whisper to one another. Um, and you can you can tell that they they definitely recognize you. We are relatively recognizable within the group. We we do kind of stand out a bit. 
I can't speak for everyone, but I think I could really go for the fig and all of stuffed hedgehog. Maybe with a chickpea and pear salad to go with it. I am ravenous. I agree. Except that I think I picked the roasted thrush, though. That sounds delicious. Just like she did last time, Sophia will order two of the chickpea and pear salads and just stick with the water. Assuming we are crashing here, um, Agri will basically say to the group, Agri tired, and make his way up without eating. Okay. <laughs> you need to eat, they'll help you sleep. And Kyra, Kyra mm -hmm. seems uh, quite excited to be going to uh, to a town. She's like, I hope you hope you don't mind if I continue to accompany you and you know keep track of your your story. Not at all. And uh, you have proven rather useful. To this. Arathius looks slightly to Helena and then goes, "Well, you have contributed well thus far." Well, I'm I'm hoping that uh, when you know, at a certain point, we can we can each perform what we've written uh, about you, and have a you know competing bards, as it were. Yeah, Shape. we can totally do that. Helena just kind of like side eyes and continues writing notes, and she motions or mentions that she'll take the smoked fish and potatoes. And more wine for the table. Cool picture. Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, so she brings around uh, uh, a bottle of uh, or a pitcher of wine. She's like, this. Uh, this one here is uh, from the uh, Astorian Vineyards. Uh, might be the last we get for a little bit. Uh, the uh, the gentleman that uh, that works there, um, Theracles, is uh, distraught. His daughter's gone missing. Um, we hope that she's found safe and secure. But in the time being, this uh, this wine is starting to become rather scarce. So, uh, as a as a thank you from the the people around here for dealing with the boar. Thank you. What is this about the vintner being? missing with children or whatever. Yeah, where's uh, where's this vintage? Oh, uh, it's uh, on the outskirts of Astoria. Um, we seem to be heading in that direction tomorrow. Perhaps you should give us the lay of where they are. Um, oh, certainly. Uh, it, uh, it's the only vineyard on the outskirts of the city. Um, hard to Hard to miss. Wooden trellises, like... Uh, but the gentleman Theracles uh, used to serve the king, but retired to uh, to with his family for uh, to make wine. But the uh, rumor is that his uh, his daughter's gone missing, and he's now pouring everything into finding her. So, hmm, I believe I've heard of him. He's a good fellow, from my what I imagine. Uh, my understanding as well, and we hope that is uh, we hope that uh, Corinna is found safe, but. Well, I think we can certainly take the time to stop. Yeah. Well, if you do that, uh, I mean, it, it speaks highly of your character that you'd be willing to do so. Are you just saying, Dean, that we were, uh, if there was anything else we could take care of on the way? Exactly. This is something we can certainly take care of. Um, mm. And as I say, he is a my understanding is this is a great person so I think we should probably maybe give him a hand if we can but more importantly anything that will help the wine flow to the people is probably a good idea it's interesting how such fated encounters happen and of course we can't uh, let children missing children abide no we cannot people's families should be taken care of mm -hmm. So you guys have your meals, retire for the uh, for the evening. Uh, when the uh, 
the tavern owner um, brings around their food should will ask for one of the salads to be taken up to Agrid. Oh, certainly. He is a growing horse, after all. It's not like him not to eat. Something, something, dramatic backstory. Something, something. <laughs> and, and, and to be fair, if he didn't eat tonight, we would likely be really late setting out tomorrow after eating our pill. What is it with the anger the young man seems to exhibit? It's like the warrior rage of the tribesmen. Was he always a druid? Well, I suppose I have seen similar things in some battles, but... I've, no, I've seen some minotaurs' uh, eyes glow red as they snorted clouds of rage and chased me through the peninsula. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. It was probably she, warranted. She smiles sweetly. Well, I'm sure you don't, my dear sweet Sophia. I feel like Sophia is not typical of her opinion. Which kind are we speaking of? Clerics? Minotaurs? No, the red-eyed minotaur variety. Well, as we discussed over, I suppose you were all drinking wine at the time. As we discussed, I don't take kindly to my lessons being interrupted. So, I, I do have a temper. It just takes quite a bit to bring it out. And only when it's actually needed. No, fair enough. You seem to fight capably enough, so I can see how you're channeling it. Well, I did until I was covered in my own blood, and then things went terribly. I believe it wasn't your blood, it was their blood. No, a good portion of that was actually my blood. Oh, dear. <laughs> Perhaps we should get you a raincoat. Uh. I think I just need to, uh, maybe I'll see if there's someone around here who could sell me some soap before we leave. Oh, I'm sure that there's definitely soap to be got. I'm sure that the inn has a list of items that it can sell you. Probably. Oh, I can guarantee it. Uh, trust me as I say. Having clean armor and equipment is the best thing you can do to preserve your own life. Absolutely. Agreed. I have not survived to the ripe old age of 30 by uh, being not so mindful of my cramps. I, uh, I try not to get close enough to the combat to get dirty. I prefer to hurl uh, insults from a distance. <laughs> That's also a valid survival tactic. Arathius remains quite quiet. But your help, my dear, has been important. I can attest to Yeah, I hurl insults from the back. I do believe one of your songs helped me hit one of my opponents, and for that I am grateful. Yeah, my songs are great for that. Like I said, my songs have put giants to sleep. My songs have killed a man. Or two or three. Well, we were underground with the water. How come you didn't just fly across the water? My wings don't work. Hmm. I had heard something about that. I was curious. Hmm. See, there's a thing with sirens. We can only fly when we're happy. 
And clearly, then you are not going to hate. My wings don't work. Okay. But what makes you? What would make you happy then? Hmm. Sorry. What was that? Well, what would make you happy then, so that you can fly? Not being cursed would be great. Well, well, I believe we have an avenue for that. Uh, wouldn't you then not be a siren? I would still be able to use my voice. I just wouldn't be able to use my. Some of my songs wouldn't be as emotionally potent. I haven't used any of those ones yet, though, so. Well, we do you exist in my truck. No, I haven't used some of my more innate songs. All I've used are my oh, bardic oh, abilities. Oh my. Hmm. Scratching the surface. I'm curious at these innate abilities. Well, but it can wait. Eh, if you're ever curious enough, I mean, I could show you if you're a willing participant. I'm sure it's something you can discuss with your patrons. Perhaps. But the night does grow long, and I should probably retire, which will take me outside. Are you trying to rest within or without again, Sophia? Oh no, I'll be sleeping outside. Well, the ceilings are low. It seems strange. Well then I should probably make my way first so my scampering and crawling doesn't uh, <laughs> keep you awake. As long as you don't fall off the roof, we should be fine. I'm, I'm more in my element there. There's something to be said about just a regular, normal bed and a wonderful night's sleep. So I will be you for a wonderful night's sleep. Right. I, I sleep quite fine outside. I like the fresh air. So Arathius goes outside and doesn't automatically put his hood up for a change. Um, as the moonlight and starlight catches his hair, it goes from black to silver as he turns the corner. And as everybody makes their way to their preferred bed for the evening, uh, we will we will call it there. Next uh, next week, the the group can make their way to the city of Astoria, and see what interesting things await them there. As uh, they now have clues regarding their different epic paths and the like. Oh yeah, we'll have a vineyard stop first. Arathius is just here for the interesting time. All right, thank you guys very much. Uh, thank you for people that were watching. It was cool to have viewers. <laughs> there was there was like one actual raid and then a, an upsurge of almost a raid amount of people. Yeah. <laughs> weird. <laughs> Very weird. Well, the raid, the raid was from the group that uh, Mikhail's been talking with. Yeah. Oh, cool. Excellent. Yeah. I can't remember the name of them. Triumph and Blunder. Triumph and Blunder. So... Yes. At some point, we'll have to figure out what they're doing. I know they want to they wanna, like do something other than D&D &D with Mikhail, so that'd be cool. Yeah, a collab piece. Perfect. Alrighty, thanks. Yeah.